So I wanted to up the difficulty of this heart box I made before using wood and epoxy. The epoxy is actually easier to work with because I can machine any particular shape and just fill it in with the liquid, the liquid cures, and then I can machine it again. The shape doesn't actually have to be perfect. So my general design idea is to create a wave shape in the middle of the heart box and have half of it be on the top and half be on the bottom. The difficulty with an all wood design when I use two different woods is creating something where it interlocks correctly. And I'm really limited by the bits that I can use. And this here is a quarter inch round over bit. And so really what I'm limited to is that shape that it can actually machine out. So I have to design something where it can get to all the areas with this particular bit. And this problem can pretty easily be seen in Fusion 360. If I machine a sharp outside corner, that's pretty easy to do. But an inside corner will be limited to the radius of my bit. That means the two will not fit together without a gap. So I designed this flowy wave shape, which I could use as a virtual cutter to cut through the box and create the shapes. I could also use the same shape to cut through a square box, which is my stock, and do the same to create the upper and lower portion to machine out. And then I could glue them together. For the bottom of the box, I decided to use cherry, and I had to glue together four different pieces to make it large enough for my particular stock size that I was starting with. There is nothing really fancy about cutting and gluing wood together, so if you have any questions, let me know. So this is one of the first projects I cut on my Avid CNC. It has a full four foot by eight foot table, which is great for even small projects because I can create different workstations for each operation. The large table also allows me to experiment with a lot of different work holding techniques using the T-Track system. So here I used a wedge to hold down the piece and I'm not a fan of this technique, and we'll see why in just a second. Just one of the fundamental problems is if you try and squeeze the wedge too tight, the piece tends to bow up in the middle, and that's not going to be good. That means it's hard to get it really tight for aggressive machining. And when you're doing some aggressive machining, the piece tends to want to lift up. I've had this happen several times, trying various ways to hold it down with wedges. Now I use some double-sided tape along with the wedges, and that prevents any problems from pull-out happening. The first machining operation of the wave shape uses two different bits. I generally use a 3 8 inch upcut bit to remove most of the material, and then I come back with a quarter inch roundover bit to do all the final smoothing. So after I finished machining the bottom half of the wave, I then had to machine the matching top half, and it's basically the same thing. I use a different wood. And in this particular case, I used Madrone because I thought it would look nice with cherry. I could then go and glue them together, which is pretty simple. I didn't do any sanding, and it's just straight off the machine glued together. So when I started this project, I was still using the blue tape and CA glue hold down method. My sole reason for using a separate little bit of MDF as a bottom alignment board is just because the tape tends to pull a little bit of the MDF off and I don't want to wreck my main table. This also allows me to just set everything up independently and throw it on the table, hold it down, and start machining uh, another box while one is being worked on uh, at a different workstation. And what I found is I really had to squish them together and let them set for a while to avoid having it pull apart when I didn't want it to. So I would go ahead and use clamps to clamp it as the glue dried. It just didn't dry fast enough and using accelerator uh, it was hit or miss for me. Since then, I have gone to some other techniques, and what I do now is just use double-sided tape with the clamping technique, and that works really well. I've been experimenting with a lot of different ways to hold down work pieces on my new CNC table. And for these, I drilled some holes in the waste board that the piece is attached to and just directly attached it down to my T-track. I ended up not liking this as it was a little bit hard to get in and out. I'll talk about these green plastic hold-down clamps in just a little bit. A lot of my bowl projects and boxes all machine the outside first because it just works a lot better. So I did the same for this. I machined the outside. So just like before, I use a 3 8 of an inch spiral upcut bit for the roughing operation, and then I use a 
quarter inch ball nose bit, also a spiral upcut, for the finishing operation. There's a lot of different ways to do two side machining, and for this project I decided to experiment with a new technique. What I did is I machined a precise jig to hold the bottom of the box in a precise location. It's located with dowels. The jig allows me to orient the box properly and consistently so that I can do a lot of these without actually having to indicate it in, which was taking a lot of time with the previous ways I was doing this. For this particular operation, I'm using the CA glue and blue tape technique again, but I've also since moved to just using one layer of double-sided tape instead, and it's just much easier and much faster. The way I'm actually holding the jig to the table is with some 3D printed hold downs, and these things work great. I did a design that's parametric, which means I can print them at any particular height and size and length that I need. Super easy. Check the link in the description if you want to make some yourself. I decided to do a pull-out test to see if it would really hold down well enough, and the CA glue just wasn't holding it down. It pulled right out. I think part of the problem with this particular case was the jig was not letting the bottom of the box sit down far enough, and it just wasn't getting enough contact with the other tape. What I did to solve this is I just planed off a little bit of the bottom of the jig, so it would sit up a little bit higher, kind of have a gap, and allow it to really tightly contact the two pieces. I worked a lot in the tool pass to avoid issues when machining. The first pass cuts off the outside material, and then I start machining the inside. I used Fusion 360's adaptive clearing with a 3 8 of an inch spiral upcut bit to remove most of the waste. And then I go on to a quarter inch ball nose for the finishing pass. So when I pull off this particular box, I'm using the double side tape technique and it pulls out pretty easily and it was holding down really well. I made the lid in exactly the same way. I basically machined the wave shape in the two halves, glued them together, and then just began machining out the shape. I machined the top of the lid first because it gives me a large flat area to, to, to then uh, take and flip over and tape back down for the second machining operation. And this just works because of the amount of surface area that I have to actually tape or glue it down. Like before, with the box bottom, I made a jig that's exactly the size of the lid, and I made sure that it was sticking up a little bit so that I could get a good adhesion with the tape when I stick it down. The sanding is always the least favorite part of any project for me, and for these it's not too bad. I put the lid on and make sure it's all sanded together at the same time so it has a really flush fit. For finishing, I've really been liking Osmo Top Oil. It's super easy to apply. I just put on a thin coat and then wipe most all of it back off. I put on three or four coats and that gives it a nice sort of satin sheen. I can then add a little bit of wax on the top to make it look even a little bit, a little bit more I don't know, a little, just a tiny bit more shiny, and I tend to like that. So that's it for this project. They turned out really nice. I'm pretty happy with it. I made several of them. I did a couple with cherry and madrone wood. The madrone is just different enough to give it a nice effect and look. I also did some with cherry and walnut wood which I thought would be a little bit too striking, but in the end, it looked really nice. Pretty happy with that combo. If anyone wants to try making this, let me know, because maybe I can make the Fusion 360 file available so that you can make your own. I can't make a Vetric V-Carve one. It's just too difficult of a project to do in V-Carve. So thanks, everyone. Have a good day.